So sleep apnea and low testosterone, um, it's something that is, is common discussion and there has been a link between the two. So uh, if you want to, to hear more about that, keep watching. Hi and welcome to uh, another Balance by Hormones video. We're going to discuss obstructive sleep apnea today and low testosterone. We've got Mike demonstrating a perfect uh, example of a sleep apnea mask because Mike has sleep apnea. Uh, so this is what he wears when he sleeps to, to help him not stop breathing. And we've got Dr. Tuliatos here today as well to, to discuss this. So hi guys. Hello. Hello. <laughs> So yeah, so sleep apnea is 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 something that is I say in the UK underdiagnosed particularly because of how the NHS sort of triages it. It's it's known all around the world. It's where you can stop breathing in your sleep or have restricted breathing in your sleep um, to a point where you get low testosterone and then it affects your sleep quality. The mask, like Mike was wearing, is is one of the solutions if you're diagnosed to actually add continuous pressure into your breathing and actually stop that happening um but there is this again discussion where um is could could testosterone treatment cause an increased risk of, of sleep apnea itself and can having maybe a sleep apnea that you're not aware of or or you are aware of but it is untreated um be causing low testosterone um so, Mike, I mean, uh, starting off with you, you you, you have sleep apnea, um, as as do I. Um, I haven't got my mask on me today, so I can't show mine. But yours looks better. But you you've had this for a while, and for you, it wasn't necessarily a case of you had that as a thing when you had low testosterone and you got it treated, right? How did yours? Yeah. I don't think the sleep apnea caused the um, the low testosterone necessarily. There may have been many other reasons for that, but over time, uh, my my snoring, I think, is always there to a certain degree, but it, I think it got worse. And it was noticeable by various partners. And it came to the point where, you know, someone said, hey, you ought to get it looked into. And I did. And um, I think the first thing, one of the um, sleep specialists, they, at the time, uh, they, I think it was the mid noughties tried to link it with testosterone. Okay, like, oh, but he also wanted to link it to my size. I was quite, I was a bit more... I was a bit bigger, my, my neck size was a bit larger, and I probably carried a bit more weight than I should have done. So, you know, more likely he said, oh, if we lose some weight, maybe you don't need the mask. But they did a whole workup on me, and and then the, the mask helped a lot because my blood pressure had gone down after, um, sleep was a lot better, and the hematocrine hemoglobin that was consistently high uh, had normalized a bit more. Mm. Uh, not dramatically, I think it depends. I mean, I would say, like I was telling you earlier, you know, in recent times now, um, I had the wrong mask. I had just the nasal pillows and I think the the, uh, the chin strap and I would end up still um, uh, making sounds and I'd have air leaks. And so this new mask that kind of covers my, I think they call this a full face mask that covers your mouth and, and your nose, but it's got kind of the nasal pillows in it. That, that's helped. And, and I, I can see on various uh, blood tests when I've looked at the hemoglobin hematocrit, it has come down. It has come down a bit. So I think it's something that, I used to be afraid of that, you know, oh, did testosterone cause this? Um, but I think I would have had a certain degree of this anyway, if I had put on additional weight as I got older. And it's not really a, a big problem to have the CPAP. It's, it just becomes part of your routine. Yeah, so CPAP is, is continuous positive airway pressure is what it stands for. And it literally just provides some pressure that's continuous whilst you're breathing to stop your airway basically collapsing. But um, yeah, Dr. Tuliatos, so there is a, and I know obviously coming from the bodybuilding world as well, where it's quite, quite common when you're getting into these sort of, you know, big guys. Um, uh, the, some say that if you are larger, if you're getting larger musculature, larger neck, or even if it is that fat, you know, if you are obese, that there could be a higher, you do see a higher incidence of people maybe getting sleep apnea. So is, is there a link with maybe improving you know muscle musculature or or in trt but then also if you maybe if you talk about where it can go into the realms of people getting larger for other reasons yes yeah, so the correlation is that a larger guy with 
perhaps thicker neck due to excessive trapezius muscles, you know, development has higher, um, has more narrow airways. So the, the part of the pharynx, which is the oral part, the nasal part and the laryngeal part, but narrow and actually the air goes down with turbulence that leads to snoring, of course. And actually this is a hypoxic uh, environment for the brain that kicks kidneys to release EPO and as a result, higher hemoglobin and hemocotocryte itself. So uh, yes, bigger guys with necks over 18 inches or 45 centimeters uh, may have higher incidence of sleep apnea. However, I can tell you that when I shared the, the, the room with a bodybuilder who was, we, we used to go to FIBO uh, Expo, you know, and we shared the same room. He was a guy with 85 kilograms, perhaps. He was a bodybuilder, a fitness competitor, and he was horribly snoring, even though he was skinny and very lean, you know, and his neck certainly was not over 40 centimeters. So perhaps it's more than this. So it's not just necessarily big guys will snore, but not smaller guys won't snore. And uh, this is the obstructive sleep apnea. We always say there's also the central type sleep apnea that is from the, from the nervous system is different thing, you know, mm -hmm. but it's most likely men who follow TRT and have erythrocytosis I guess fifty percent of them have not treated the, their sleep apnea. Yeah. Okay. So that's so. There's, so there's two parts, isn't there? So um, we'll go on to the other part in a second. But the so essentially, if you have, um, I mean, I, I, you know, having been to the sleep clinics myself because I'm a patient and I have sleep apnea, it is a mix of of very big people often, and then there are plenty of sort of skinny people intertwined and i did ask the the respiratory consultant about it and, and they said it's either big necks you know things like that it's large large tissue or it's like a a structural biomechanics sort of the jaw maybe drops back a little bit too far you know neck shape if people are like kyphos as they get older it can affect the airway and things like that and it can contribute so that yeah that that obstructive part um yeah i, I can see why that 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 link might be there as you get bigger. Um, so in order to avoid the jaw dropping, we can slip this to the left or to the, to the right side. Yeah. And this, uh, perhaps this this the reason, this factor, you know. Yeah, and there's things like chin straps like Mike talked about as well that can, they sort of just an elastic thing that goes to the top of your head that stops your, your jaw dropping down. But um, I think the thing is, if you've got any concerns about it, you know, the, you can, I mean, the NHS is hard to get through the GP to get to the sleep clinic, but it's, you know, you can do it privately, other places in the world, you can get things checked out. Um, because the other part to it, although it's not particularly strong at like the evidence and things is that they do, they, there is some things that I've read that, that say, if you have sleep disruption, for some reason, that it might lower testosterone. So this is where the other link, I suppose, comes in. Um, you speak about natty people, huh? Yeah, because some people, you know, when they're getting their work up for low testosterone, um, some people say, um, I'm saying doctors, endocrinologists and things have said, oh, it might be because you have sleep apnea, which I suppose is a, is a, a fair thing to potentially look into. Um, <laughs> but the, um, I suppose that the, the way that I see that is, uh, and there's some studies mentioning maybe if REM sleep is disrupted, you might get less testosterone production. But, um, you know, if you've got low testosterone, often sleep quality is poor as well. So I, I, it's again, like, do you have low testosterone maybe that's causing your sleep to be poor, you know, or could it be the other way around? Um, yes, I mean, it sounds reasonable if you have disrupted sleep to have low testosterone levels. That's why I'm asking the guys when they follow a PCT, for instance, sleep well from 11 to 7 because reconstruction of the hormones and LH happens during the REM phase of sleep. So it could be that OSA and the waking up with choking during your sleep may lead to eventually uh, poor sleeping quality and uh, low T. I was going to say some of the European guidance that I had read um, showed that you don't necessarily have to um, wait to correct the sleep apnea to put patients on TRT. I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Is it, isn't a contradiction always say in, uh, in order to start TRT? Always say with elevated hematocrit. 
I think with elevated hematocrit, yeah, it can be contraindicated. But I had seen that 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 study that said if someone has obstructive sleep apnea, that doesn't necessarily mean you have to delay the testosterone treatment if you get them treated already for sleep. So if you're on treatment for sleep apnea, you don't have to wait to put them on sleep, treatment for sleep apnea and then resume the testosterone treatment because as long as it doesn't elevate hematocrit, there's no no problem because yeah, uh, you'll be treated and so the, what they're saying is you can't expect sleep apnea alone or, or, or CPAP therapy alone to fix the testosterone level is, is what I think the guy oh, no, 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 no. and and what Mike was talking about earlier um I so me and Mike both have sleep apnea and both on TRT when my mask wasn't fitting correctly so I had a I had a review and I, I had loads of leaking of my mask. I don't know what I was probably wearing it wrong. I think the head strap loosened over time. You have to replace them. Is on my blood testing that I do, I had a higher hemoglobin and hematocrit than usual. So it literally went up sort of three three points, I think, of my hematocrit and, and my hemoglobin. So then I got it retested um, a couple of months, probably about three months after getting that fitted and it's back down. So I know it's just my case. And I, Mike said it's happened to him before it's as well. As well. Yeah, but that's something to know that if you're on TRT and for some reason you're getting higher hematocrit and hemoglobin, of course, like changing protocol and things like that is something to consider and talk to the doctor about. But there's definitely that link that if maybe you do have a sleep apnea that you're not aware of, um, that actually getting that treated might be the thing that allows you to stop getting high hematocrit. Um, and if you are obviously being treated like me and Mike, if you're getting high hematocrit, it might indicate that there's a problem with how the treatment's going. Like you're not, you're getting a leak in the mask. So instead of the air going down, your, you know, your, your, your airway, it's actually blowing in your eyes or, or on your, on your partner, or whatever next door to you. Um, so yeah, I think that's a good, a good point to make. I don't know what you think. Yeah, I think, I think that's, um, there's other factors as well to consider where, what CPAP, treatment can, can help with when you once you're diagnosed with uh, sleep apnea such as you know improving your blood pressure and improving your energy levels potentially you're not falling asleep uh, at the wheel uh, if you're driving or you know you might not have as much fatigue so there are some who get on trt treatment may be undiagnosed with sleep apnea and then still have some lingering symptoms that may not be related to the testosterone treatment but are related to you know this this uh, undiagnosed or untreated sleep apnea I mean, the, the evidence is there that if you have untreated sleep apnea, that your overall risk of dying is much, much higher. Overall risk of getting heart disease, lots of the main comorbidities uh, is much, much higher. So I think it's a good thing to sort of just be aware of anyway. Um, there's a few apps and things now, and I know there's loads of smartwatches and stuff that can detect your sleep quality and oxygen saturation in your sleep. So that could be a good place to start for, for people if they don't want to go to their doctor, I suppose. So that was the discussion about obstructive sleep apnea and low testosterone and testosterone with sleep apnea. Um, if you like these videos, please like and subscribe. Uh, there'll be more videos coming soon. So uh, thanks, keep watching. Um, thanks, Dr. T. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Sam.